Joining me now, Congressman Kevin McCarthy, the Minority Leader in the United States House of Representatives. Kevin, how are you? And happy Father's Day. I'm good. Thank you, Trey. Happy Father's Day to you. I know of all the jobs you've had, that's the job you uh, worked the hardest at and cared the most about. And I think Watson and Abigail really appreciate what you have done for them. Well, you're kind to say that, Kevin, and the same to you. Tell us about the cartels. Uh, they are scary, uh, but it looks like there's an increase in their activity. Trey, you know it better than anyone, not just your work uh, in Congress, but you are a prosecutor. The, these cartels are making a fortune. But they make a fortune by human trafficking. They've taken over cities. And what they do is that when they go across the border, those ranchers, they burn their houses down. They kidnap their grandchildren. They want to move them out so they have free reign. And you talk about a crisis on the border, and you gave the definition of a crisis. I don't know if there's different degrees to it, but what's happening today is the highest crisis possible. From humanitarian, the number of children, three, two, one-year-old, all by themselves with no clothes where a, far, where a rancher finds them. The amount of drugs coming across, fentanyl is up 300 percent. Now, if you think it's only happening to the border states, you're wrong. If you were listening to this show tonight, call, call, call your police department tomorrow and ask how many new deaths of fentanyl are happening in your community because of what's coming across this border now. And then what you find is something I think you, Trey, had been on Intel to know about. They are catching people. It's not just Central America. 2,000 Romanians the other day from Yemen. And it's not just people from Yemen. It's people on the terrorist watch list. Now, publicly, I know they've come out and said there's been two of them, but you and I know from intel that, that it could even be higher. But the one thing you have to understand, they didn't catch the two together. They caught them on separate days. Why are they coming? Who are they talking to? And what do they have planned? And then we have an administration that Biden won't even talk about being a crisis, pushes it off to its vice president, who laughs at the situation, saying, well, she hasn't been to Europe either. When you collapse your border, we are a country of a rule of law. When you break down society, you break down the rule of law. You know that probably better than anyone. But this is beyond a crisis, and it, it's affecting not just border states, but your states, because they're not testing people. They're shipping them into your community. And we are a very giving nation. We believe in immigration. More than a million new people become Americans every year. But more than a million people will enter this country illegally and be here by this southern border crisis, created not by a new law, by ex simply executive orders of this new President Biden. All right, Kevin, let me ask you one more question about the border, and then I want to ask you about, about China. But you've been in the House a long time. You've been in leadership pretty much from day one. I, I'm scratching my head. Why won't the vice president go to the border? I mean, w what is the downside to actually going to the border and acting like you're, you're trying to fix it? Why, why won't she go? I have no idea. She wants to ignore the problem, but she would learn so much more. You know, two-thirds of all the Republicans in Congress have been to the border this year. When I went there, there's things you learn because the border agents can tell you right then. And the one thing you have to understand, when there's a crisis at a border, when there's unaccompanied children coming in, you know who's caring for them? The border agents. So what's happening, they're being taken off the border, so the border's even more wide open. We're finding people rushing it like we've never seen before. But we're finding people that are on that terrorist watch list that are coming from other countries, from more than 140 other countries. Why would they come to the southern border? Because they know it's open and they know they can enter America that way. But she should go there and she should learn firsthand what the problem is to find the solutions for it. All right. Speaking of finding the problem, COVID-19, thank the Lord, our country seems to be on the downside of the mountain as res respect to COVID, but there's been a, a heavy price to pay. What are the chances of, of, of us finding out the origins of it, and what can you do in the minority uh, to facilitate that? It, it is a very heavy crisis, because think about the pay, what people had to pay for this. 3.8 million people have lost their lives because China lied to the world. 600,000 of those 3.8 are Americans. And for so long, we had social media denying our ability to even talk about it, of where it came from, or how to even call it from Wuhan and others. But the first thing we should do is declassify the intelligence. That would show us that it came from Wuhan. The next thing we should do is deny the, the function of funding in Wuhan anymore. 
We should deny NIH from their ability to give grant or subgrants to countries like China, Iran, North Korea, or Russia. You know what we should do as well? We should limit the number of visas from China coming in. We should lift the sovereign immunity so those 600,000 individuals who've died their family could actually have justice and sue China. We should actually relocate the 24th Winter Olympics. They shouldn't be held in Beijing. If China lied to the rest of the world, why should the world reward them? The World Health Organization, it shouldn't get funding from America. It should be restructured. But one of the first things President Biden did was send them more than $240 million with no strings attached. We cannot get to the origin of this by listening to China or the World Health Organizations. We should declassify the information and find first and foremost where it came from and let the entire world know. Kevin, I know it's a tough political environment, and my next guest is actually Mr. Jim Clavering from South Carolina, and I know it's tough being in leadership. Is there any prospect for bipartisanship in terms of finding out the origins of COVID-19? I know it's a tough environment, but any chance that, that both sides will come together and say, yeah, let's find out what happened? I will tell you, as a Republican leader, I'd put no politics involved in this. 600,000 Americans died. Let's find where it came from. Stop putting up roadblocks. You know, when this new administration came in, prior we had Secretary Pompeo, the first thing they did was stop the State Department from doing the research. They criticized Senator Tom Cotton when he talked about what was happening in the Wuhan labs and the actions from the cell phones and others and the doctors. Let's make sure all information comes, and this should not be political. It shouldn't be about Republicans or Democrats. It should be about all the Americans and everybody else in the world who had lost their lives. Wouldn't you want to know where it came from so it can never happen again? I do. And I want you to go open your gifts from Connor and Megan and have a wonderful end to your Father's <laughs> Day. And I hope I get to see you soon. Thank you for coming on. All right. Take care, Trey. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.